Uh, we've been doing this show for like 12 years. And for those of you who are just joining for the first time today, I'm sure there's nobody like that, but I'm going to say it anyway because we're recording. Um, we were doing it like almost every day in a row when the pandemic, when lockdown first started. And now we're, you know, we're taking it easy by just hanging out with you every week. Um, the idea is that we hang out every week, we share juice, and um, then uh, hopefully during the week, you can, we can all sort of roll the wheel forward, as they say. Um, so what, what this is, is basically we just work together and we work together for 20 minutes and I have my little timer here. And then we, I take questions from you about your work and your creative process. Very important that it's your work and your creative process. Um, and, uh, you know, hopefully offer some suggestions, solutions, tips, tricks of the trade. If you have a question during the question time, Audrey, could you tell us how to get in touch? Got it. So there are a couple of ways. Um, if you are inside of the Zoom, what you can do is write... Um, so sorry, is raise your hand. You can do that by clicking the reactions button, which is likely at the bottom of your screen on a laptop or the top if you're on an iPad or a tablet. Click into that little raise your hand button. It'll let us know you have a question. We won't get to everybody's questions necessarily. We kind of go in a, in a popcorn-y type order, um, but we do our best. Um, you can also ask a question online um, by tweeting at at Watch Me Work SLP with the hashtag HowlRound, which is H O W L R O U N D, or you can write to the Public Theater's Instagram or Twitter as well. And we'll get those too. I think that is all at the moment. I think that's I think that's all. Okay. We will we will begin. Mm -hmm.
<laughs> Here we are. We're back. Huh? We're back. All right. All right, all right. So. 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 Um, yeah, here we are. Ready to take your questions about your creative process. Anybody got any questions? I've got a question. We've got two questions. Oh my goodness. All right, Kate. All right. Did you read that? Hi. Hey. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, thank you. First of all, this is only my second time being here. I'm really excited. Mm, thanks for um, showing up. <laughs> sure. So I, I have a question that's kind of, so in like high school, college and grad school, I was very active in like theater making communities. Um, and I was writing plays and that kind of stuff. And then like the past five or so years, I've been focusing on other writing forms and like more active with poetry and then like copywriting day job kind of stuff. And I realized that I was struggling to find an entry point back into playwriting because I had these like previously in all of those other communities, I had an idea of like what stage I was writing for, oftentimes what people I was writing for. And like, uh -huh. even sometimes I knew the audience I was writing for. Uh -huh. And um, I feel like so often in like writing, I'm like trying to figure out ways to take like to get more structure but here I feel like I had all these constraints in my mind and now when I try to write a play I'm like oh my god the whole world is there and I don't know where to start <laughs> and I, I think what's kind of funny is that after so many years of like writing these poems now and like performing and like all of that stuff I end up writing a bunch of dialogue into poems and I'm like does this actually just want to be a play and why don't I just let it so <laughs> thank you no so that's really cool that you you did a lot of theater work and work in theater and, and theater writing. And in the past several years, you've done other kinds of writing. Now you're thinking, eh, maybe I do some more writing for the theater. And how do you get back into it? I would say you, you know, you can do one of two things. You can imagine you're in your sort of old mindset, like, I know my, you know, you can imagine like I'm writing a play for this old audience, you know, and then once you write it, it can be like you said, for the world, you know, um, usually uh, I don't suggest thinking of an audience, but if that helped you in the past, it could be a good thing. It could be a good thing to do. If you don't want to, if you go in, no, my, cause my audience was seventh graders, you know, and I don't want to write for seventh graders anymore, for example, then um, just write, just follow the characters. I think that's usually the best thing to do. Follow the characters, get really into the characters, ask yourself, you know, what do my characters want? What are they doing here? You know, what are they trying to, to achieve? You know, um, is that helpful? I mean, um, are you thinking of like, you want to join some playwriting groups or what are you thinking? Uh oh, you're on mute. Oh, hold on one second. Yeah, sorry. There you go. <laughs> sorry um I mean okay. I'd like to do that eventually but I think because I I still am like friends with a lot of people who are making theater I guess it's just um I wonder if when you come to an art form of writing which it can be so solitary from like such a like I don't know if I should say community mindset but like where when you're writing you're like well I have to do xyz to serve this purpose now I guess that it feels like I don't have like a purpose to do it. Uh -huh. um, it. It feels really silly to say this out loud because I could write, I could write a poem for you in two mm -hmm. minutes and then be right. like, it's done, no purpose needed. But right. now that I'm thinking of like, how did I get to writing these plays before? And it used to be, well, somebody needs a play or somebody like there, you could have this stage for this weekend or something. And uh -huh. so I would be uh -huh. like, great, urgency is here. And I feel like there's a sense of purpose. And now I'm kind of like, 
well, if it's not like serving a particular community, it's a hard entry point to get into. Right, right, right. So your your poems, you say, don't need a purpose. Is, is that did I hear you correctly? Yeah, yeah. So just pretend you're writing one of those. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I mean, you have. It sounds like you have to trick your mind a little bit. You know, I mean, you have to sort of trick trick yourself in a good way, in a good way by saying like, oh, it's just one of those poems. You know, if you want, and and with a lot of dialogue. You know, like, you know, I don't know, Shakespeare, like those are long poems, aren't they? You know, you can just, you can just, yeah, but you can just, you can just, I mean, I think the thing is, is just to maybe, maybe you can, you, you, it sounds like you need a place for it. You can create a place or you can create a place for it. You can say, this needs to be done by X date. You can give yourself a deadline. You can call up a couple of friends or, or text them and say, Hey, I want to show you a play that I'm writing by this date. Maybe you have other friends who are also writers and you guys can have like a, a hangout time, a presentation. It can be informal, you know, it can be over zoom. You don't even have to leave the house. You know, hi, I want to read to you uh, a monologue from one of my plays that I'm writing. You know, you can create a, a community. And so it will be for that, like I'm writing, it will be in service of that purpose. I have to show up on you know, next Wednesday at five o'clock on a Zoom and read three pages to some friends of mine. You see what I mean? So you can, yeah. you can be, you know, and like we learned from Beijing, the snow can be artificial. It doesn't have to be like a <laughs> real thing. It can be like a fake thing. It can be fake. Fake snow works just fine. I guess I'm not watching the Olympics, but mm-hmm. I just read the little headlines. Um, but you know what I mean? You, yeah. You, you can sort of create a community and, and, you know, I'm sure you, you said you, you're still in touch with some theater makers. Yeah. Okay. Well, that could that help? Like, yeah, that's a really good point. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and you can each share. So it's not just all about you. You can say, hey, I'm going to read three pages. You read three pages. You read three pages. And then we, you know, hang out and talk, you know. Thanks. Yeah, that framework of like, this is in service to this. Yeah. Within these yeah. parameters is helpful. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> Thank you yeah. so much. Oh, sure, sure, sure. Thank you. Thanks for showing up. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, all right, let's go to Crystal. Hey, Crystal. Crystal. How you doing? I'm good. How are you? I'm fine. How are your Barbies? <laughs> so look at you. You're laughing. Oh, this is good. This I, goes uh, well. This, yeah, because your um idea of making them talk to the dolls has opened a whole conversation that I mean, I don't even think I've thought about like how powerful subtext is when you're when you have dolls talking Mm -hmm. and you get to really hear what people are thinking Mm -hmm. behind the mask of the dolls so it's Mm -hmm. it's been kind of like mind-blowing um so it's and like now I'm almost I'm kind of I'm almost done but I'm not done Mm -hmm. um because I'm kind of like it I've it's it's almost gone in a completely different direction as to when I began the play and the whole you know when we were talking about like um if it was from my voice it's okay Mm -hmm. you know um and so I'm like okay so before this whole thing with the dolls being a part of this play um I think I had a clearer voice Mm-hmm. of what I was trying to say mm-hmm. um, through one of the characters and now like these dolls have kind of like possessed these people mm-hmm. that like I'm kind of like lost as to what the the uh the argument is the the arc is the mm-hmm. like kind of getting to the I think I lost some some voice or maybe of my own voice, maybe I needed to be not there, but like, I'm, I'm kind of having some trouble, um, kind of, well, solving the situation mm-hmm. of, um, of, of some hard truths with Ken and everything like that. Like, <laughs> <laughs> that's really funny. <laughs> so. I, Kiss yeah. off some hard truths. Okay. So, <laughs> so what? So what's your question? You know, let it rip, girl. 
No, because last time you were like, oh, I don't want it to be too much of my voice. I'm like, let the dolls talk, play the dolls. Now you're right. like, oh no, it's not, I don't know. It's not my voice. So I don't know where it's going on. Just go with it. Look, you're laughing, you're smiling. It seems like you're having fun writing. It's, yeah. It's fun. You're having a good time. You know, they're trying on lots of clothes, I hope. <laughs> My hope for those Barbies, they get to be like, I have a date tonight or whatever. I think one, there was one Barbie, you should always have a date. I'm like, dang, girl. But, you know, <laughs> I have a date tonight. So, um, you know, let them have a good time. Yeah. Maybe it ain't about Ken. Maybe they kick Ken to the curb. Mm. It's time to, Ken is, you know, Ken's the patriarchy. I don't know. No, I'm being silly, but have fun. I mean, gee, it's Barbies. I mean, really, if you, and if you spend that much time, like walking like that on your, on your feet, like what's that about? Right. Does anyone have any back problems? I don't know. <laughs> you got to walk like this all the time. Have fun, you know, and just, you know, you can pick like, 10, like you can make a list, 10 stupid things that can happen by the end. Do you have an end already? No, I have not. Okay, I, I, so you just no, make a list. Just make a stupid list. 10 stupid things. That can be stupid. It can't be good. They can't be good and profound. They can't be deep. They can't be meaningful. Um, they have to be stupid, like stupid in a good way. Right? Do that. <laughs> make a list. Make a list. Oh, it's fun. And like, and, and pick one and say, oh, I like this one the best. And then just write toward that. And and not worry about the time because it has to be ten, a uh, ten. Worry. May, maybe you won't do the assignment. Okay, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> You're free, my sister. It's February. <laughs> you don't have to do the assignment. Not now. Not here. Oh, run! <laughs> Come on, now's the time. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. You know, I mean, sometimes, you know, you need to, well, you know what I'm saying. Yeah, I do have to like, admit it to a, a place. Yeah, when? Um, when so, is that? When? when? Um, I, uh, in like in like a month and a half. Yeah, okay. And if it's, you know what? I mean, if it's 20 pages, just take the first 10 and submit those. And, ooh, you never know. Don't, well, don't worry about it. Don't, 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 you know, enjoy your laughing. You're having fun. Okay. Okay. Thank okay. you. Okay. You're welcome. <laughs> Thank you, Crystal. All right. Um, we have got Lou. Go hey, for Lou. Lou. Hi. Hey, good to see you. Hey, good to see you again. Great seeing you. I wanted to report the last time we talked, I used the word tortured to describe how I was feeling. Uh oh. And, simil right. and similar to Crystal, I'm actually having fun, which is uh, like, yeah. what? Yay, <laughs> so that's like yay. a breakthrough. Yay. And so further to this fun, I wanted to bring this question to you because I'm writing memoir. Mm -hmm. I'm writing about my mother mm -hmm. who's been gone for 25 years. Oh, wow. Yeah. And the tentative title of this work is a uh, fat ghost. She was a very large woman and I'm a large woman and only became large after she died. And I'm trying mm. to trying to figure out how we're mm -hmm connected and where I begin and where she ends and mm -hmm. it's also very funny like my mother was a hilarious person mm -hmm. and I forgot how hilarious she was because I like she was sick my whole life but I'm cha this is my question I'm channeling dialogue uh -huh. for, for a person who's not alive anymore mm -hmm. and I'm finding myself really having some complicated feelings about it, but, but also having fun. And I think as I'm sitting here with you and, and the opportunity to talk about it, I think I just wanted to talk about giving dialogue to people who are gone mm -hmm. and what you think about it, or maybe what I think about it. Um, again, I'm having a great time. It feels like I'm talking to her for the first time in a real oh. way in a very long time. And I'm making myself laugh with the work, which is like, but it's hard. I mean, it's, it's hard and deep work I'm trying to do um but she had this bite and so I use the humor to kind of cut it and some of the things I'm having I'm putting them in quotes but I don't know if she said that she said those things but I know she would have said those things if I put her in that position so it's also this doll thing you're talking about so mm -hmm. I guess I just wanted to talk about dialogue with people who aren't here anymore and how we represent them and mm -hmm. I don't know mm -hmm. if I have a more pointed question no, than that I think that's Lou I think that's a great question to ask you're talking about um, 
respect. You're, you're showing up with respect. And it sounds to me like you're showing up with best intentions, right? So, mm -hmm. um, and that's, you know, when we, when we, when we uh, write about people who are, whether we know them, knew them well, like you had a great relationship, sounds like with your mom, or we don't know them at all. There's someone from history, you know, or, or, or an historical figure, you know. Um, I feel like if you show up with respect, a lot of heart and best intentions, then, and you get lucky. It sounds like you have, they will be behind you. I mean, she mm. is behind you, mm. but she is behind you in spirit as well. You're mm. laughing, you're enjoying, you're feeling a lot of feelings, you know, you know, and I'm sorry for your loss. And it, 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 she sounds like an amazing person, but she's behind you. She's, you know, giving you a lot of great energy. Yeah. I, I don't know. I mean, you would, you will determine if you need actual, you know, the quotes thing I, again, I mean, it's not only, you know, I mean, black history month, the great thing about black history month is that we're all, we all get to remind ourselves that we're free and, we can mm. be the vanguard of like, we're free. But when we say we're free, we means all of us. Hello, mm. we remember <laughs> you're free. Um, if you come to it with, with a, a, a good heart and, and, and respect and best intentions, you are free. You, girl, you run with it. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Run with it. She's so proud of you. Oh, thank and you. And so grateful, you know? I mean, come on, you're putting her in a play. I don't know if she liked plays and whatnot, but, but what an honor, what a, how proud she must be. And again, again, I'd say it a hundred times, you're approaching it with respect and best intentions. So I feel like she's talking, I feel like she's talking to you because she told me last week, you better make me famous. That's what she said. See, see, you're going to make her famous. She's going to be played by someone fabulous. Right. And she's going to be yeah. like, dang, I never looked so good. Mom, I mean, really, mom, who do you want to play in the theatrical version of yourself? Who do you want to play mm. you? You know, and she, right. She's what a, what a delicious, beautiful gift. Um, mm. So you get to be free. Um, mm. <laughs> you know, all right. Yeah. yeah. All right. That's perfect. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. You're welcome so much. What a beautiful question. Absolutely. All right, we got about 20 minutes left and we're gonna go to Matthew. Go for it, Matthew. Hey, Matthew. Hey, how are you? First question, I've been uh, doing this for uh, two years. Thank you so much for everything you've done. It's been really just uh, such such a boon, such a wonder. Thank, um, thank you. Early on in the pandemic, while you were writing plays, I was writing poetry, wrote uh, a few hundred um, and then let them sit for about a year and for about four months I've been editing, which I've learned is going to ultimately take me probably longer than, than the, uh, the writing. Um, but in, in what I've been doing is sweeping through the drafts, um, about 150 poems uh, over 30 times. And then only last week um, did I decide a new approach. Uh, which was just drilling into what is the meaning? What is the purpose? What what can people get out of this? Um, last week when you were talking with Crystal about uh, having the doll speak, that was a bit of a, a transformation for her, just a chance for her to look at the work differently, a new way. So um, now I've done my past looking at the purpose and I could go back to uh, the incremental approach, but just wondering, are there in, in the edit process general ideas about how to break out of one's mindset and be able to see a work in a new way, approach it from a new way? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, that's a great question, Matthew. Um, how are you? We, we talked uh, uh, with someone else last week about uh, how, how are you uh, doing the rewriting? Are you reading them silently to yourself? Are you standing up and reading them aloud? Are you sitting and reading them aloud? How are you going about it? Uh, different ways uh, on different uh, times, but I've definitely been reading them and, and certainly how the words sound is, is a very mm -hmm. helpful thing. Mm -hmm. I haven't mm -hmm. stood up. I mean, it's, it's I, of course, it's, it's optional. I just, I just think getting the body into it is, is a great uh, way to hear it um, in a more in-depth way sometimes. Mm -hmm. um, I was talking to a, a student because I teach at NYU today. He was he had a uh, a character who's a, a tennis, uh, a former tennis pro. And I 
ran on stage and I pretended I was holding my racket, you know, there you are with the tennis racket. And swing, you know, I said, have you done this well, as you're writing? Mm-hmm. Said, no, not yet. You know, so that, that kind of thing. Get, get, get your body into it. Get your mm-hmm. body into it as much as possible. And are you thinking about like um, where it might, uh, for lack of a better word, go, what you might do with it? Because um, plays, we can think of, well, we can find people to perform them. Have you, have you been thinking about that? Yeah, r- rather extensively, actually. Okay. Um, in some ways, I'm, I'm a little concerned about the idea of having poetry readings because people tend to feel a little bit um, withdrawn from the idea of going to things like that. Oh. It's a very, very uh, eclectic and small group. Mm-hmm. Um, so I've been exploring the idea of using an auto tune. Uh, in in how how I read and and I, I play music, so um, I have a uh, a looper on order and might be building up some loops, which could go oh. with music, but also with the words. So yeah, I, I certainly want to experiment. Um, I've learned because I've also done video art that um, building works uh, at, while you're still editing means <laughs> sometimes you end up creating something and only to find that uh, the work has changed, and then it's just a matter of uh-huh. Either start from uh-huh. scratch, but yeah, no, that's that's certainly something I'm. I'm I love worried. those ideas. I mean, you you play music, you're or you're getting a looper, you're mm-hmm. you've done some video work. I mean, it would be a cool project to have online too. You could just like post, I don't know, one a week and just kind of do it differently every time. Mm-hmm. Um, that would that's be really right cool. Now. To, to watch, you know, there you are, like, I don't know where in Washington Square Park doing it. Mm-hmm. Someone's filming you with, you know, their iPhone. Um, and then you could do a lot of, I don't know, it could be a really cool way to get the work um, out there. It could mm-hmm. be really beautiful and fun since you do that, that kind of work already, you know, the video mm-hmm. stuff, the music stuff. Right. That's fun. great. It could be fun. And the thing about, uh, you know, e- editing, if you're, you know, shaping it and shaving off, you just, you know, where you sort of like feel like, oh, this one's dragging, you know, and maybe it needs that one's a poem that needs work, you know, or oh, this one feels like it's really happening. Okay. that's mm-hmm. you know, are, are there different lenses that you've used to uh, revisit the same works if you're going back time after time to revise? Mm-hmm. I, I mean, I, again, I use the body for, for me, it, it, reading aloud and I prefer standing up, but you know, it's just me reading aloud and getting my body into it is the best way to feel it. Mm. You know, so that I'm not just operating from the neck up going, hmm. That's you great. Know, I'll that. try that. Yeah, it's just it's also kind of fun. And you're practicing performing it. Mm-hmm. You know, um, and performance poetry, you know, online is kind of cool. Mm-hmm. True yeah. facts. Great. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you, Matthew. Great question. Thanks. Matthew. Um, we've got about 15 minutes. And we don't currently have a question. Oh, good. So we can enjoy quiet. Yeah. I'm checking on Twitter just to be sure. Hmm. Rebecca, go for it. Hi, everyone. Hi, Susan Laurie. Hey, Rebecca. Hi, Audrey. Good to see you, sis. Yes, good to be here. Thank you for for making time again. Mm -hmm. Um, I sometimes walk past the public theater thinking longingly (laughs) of being in person someday again. Right? This is, yeah, yeah. But this is, this is almost, uh, it's good in a different way. I, you've, you've written plays that have historical content. And I, I was writing along today and once the uh, timer went off, I was like, I wonder if there's ever too much history in something that's historical. Like I, I talk with people and I'll mention something and they have no idea what I'm talking about. So then I think, mm-hmm. well, I've got to explain it mm-hmm. in order to get to the point I want to get to. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. and I, I'm having a little trouble. There's one section took a really long time to write that I, mm-hmm. I sort of knew I had to explain it. Um, 
but now I'm in a section where it's like, do I have, is this necessary? Mm-hmm. So I'm not quite sure how to tell. Mm-hmm. 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 I, I'm, I'm trying to remember, is it, you were writing a novel that was historical? I'm trying to remember. No, it's, this is a while it's, ago. Um, a memoir? No, tell me. It's part memoir, part, part memoir. Um, why they did it. Um, I mean, it's, it's set in the Jim Crow period. Uh-huh, and, uh-huh. Um, okay. 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 Uh, okay. Yeah. So, okay. So, right. So there's a, hmm, um, it, it sort of, you mean bringing people up to speed who might not be aware of some h- historical e- e- event right. or situate or context. Mm-hmm. Yes. Well, mm-hmm. so the example I can use. Mm-hmm. So, I, you know, during last summer, I was writing about um, cotton gins. Mm-hmm. The only reason I was writing about cotton gins is mm-hmm. I, I, not that I didn't know what they were, mm-hmm. is that they were used to torture people, mm-hmm. <laughs> enslaved mm-hmm. people. Mm-hmm. And that was an, that's an important thing for later mm-hmm. In, mm-hmm. in the piece, uh, the manuscript. So I understood that. Well, now I'm in a, trying to contextualize 1937, kind of Memphis, Tennessee. Mm-hmm. I just don't know how much I, I should, mm-hmm. I can say, or, mm-hmm. how, you know, at what point is, are my readers going to go, please stop. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, mm-hmm. I hear you. No, I, 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 no I, to- I totally understand. Um, in, when I think about, and this might be a similar thing with, with um, dialogue and exposition in a play. Sometimes there's a big a whole honker bunch of information that the audience needs to hear to, to, uh, to understand what's going on. Um, and the characters either know it already or, right? So, so mm-hmm. that's tricky. And when we don't do it as well, it's the characters just talking. And then I went to the store and then, you know, she's like, no, I, move it along, move it along, move it along. But mm-hmm. in, in my experience, if you tie the exposition and this is again with with dialogue and if you tie the exposition to the character's need or to a character's need so Mm. i have to tell you i went to the store because then you'll know that i was out in the rain okay you see what i'm saying so this character has a need to tell this because there's something else to understand so if if with historical information if you tie the historical information to a character's need make it part make it an integral part of the character's journey dramatic journey or story journey you see mm-hmm. um then it will be part of the, woven into the fabric of the story instead of just a, a piece of in, a historical information that you kind of got right mm-hmm. it'll also be juicier um, and you might find, oh, I only need to tell like half of it because these three, th- these three things, you know, does that make sense? Yeah, it, it does. And um, yeah, I think trying to figure out how to, I'm trying to figure out how to introduce a journalist, um, okay. but I feel like I have to go all the way back to John Brown and explain Kansas. Um, okay. okay. <laughs> well, it's because Memphis in 1937 didn't have any black newspapers. They all came from Kansas. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, okay. so okay. in my mind, it all is really important. And I, okay. so, so tying it to one of the recurring characters is probably, I, I hope it would help me make it interesting and and necessary to I, I think so and then and then we won't most of us won't even feel that we're being you know told something that isn't necessary because it's necessary to the character and the character is necessary to the story mm-hmm. i mean i mean you know shakespeare that it's kind of it's a it's a it's a technique you know mm-hmm. you know um there's a lot of exposition going on in, in a lot of these plays and novels that we think, oh, wow, this is such a great detail. The, the novelist is just being, you know, smart about giving you the vitamins with the ice cream. You know? <laughs> right. You know? Yeah. You know? yeah. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, and, and see, yeah, it's just maybe also write down the sort of um, maybe three things that you really need to cover to, to understand the period. Three mm-hmm. things. Boom, boom, boom. And say, okay, is there a story, a little story there? Mm-hmm. Is there something that happened to somebody who was a relative of somebody already in the story? You know? Mm-hmm. And when they well, see this with memento from this person, they think of those, those things that w- w- when that happened to so-and-so, mm-hmm. you know, and, and then you'll you, the, also, it's, it's a really effective way for the audience to understand or for the readers to understand the historical information, because you put it in the context of a story. You know, we think about like um, uh, the Iliad, you know, and the history of the Trojan war, you know, it's not Trojan war history. It's the Iliad. And you go, wow, yeah, the Iliad is rocking. You know, you know, we know a lot about history, mm-hmm. but it didn't come to us like in historical text, you know, mm-hmm. it came to us like a story. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I have to say some of this has gotten clearer because I, I actually did what, you know, you have told us to do in the past. Yay. <laughs> Yay. So. Yay. <laughs> Yay. There's only oh, so yeah. much you can jam into a. Mm-hmm. index card three right? by five right <laughs> yes. right yes right yeah so yeah and i was talking to someone today who said um you can take it to another level and use one syllable single syllable words on the index card so you really have oh to be God. like huh. uh, it could be fun just as a game you know not mm-hmm. a you know <laughs> just to focus yeah. even more yeah uh the wordle the wordle way to uh historical memoir. <laughs> mm-hmm. I love it. Sounds like it's really coming along, Rebecca. It is. It, it's got to, because I want to be done. So uh-huh, there you go. That's important. <laughs> yeah. I want to be done. I hear that. I hear that. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, so you much. Thanks. Great question. Thank you. Nice to see you. All right. We've got about five minutes left and we are going to go to Lynn. Hey, go Lynn. for it, Lynn. Hey, how you doing? <laughs> Uh-oh, you got oh, go there. ahead. There, there you go. go. Now I can say it. God, I've missed you. Hey, likewise. How's your fam? M- how's my family? Yeah, your uh, sister. Uh, she's gone. I'm sorry. That's okay. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, I've been oh, writing. Sorry. I've been, I've missed you so much. Yeah. I've missed the group. And, and, you know, it's so nice to see Crystal you know, coming along and, you know, uh, and so many others, Carol is here and, and just, you know, anyway, anyway, I've been writing 10 minute plays. Right on. You know, because uh, I took, I took the play I was writing and I, I started just writing. Um, I thought I'd find out more about it if I wrote it in, um, you know, as a story, mm-hmm. you know, somehow it gets deeper. There's, it's like you said about that writer who, you know, has all of these, um, um, as the specificity and, and the, who the language of, of uh, sometimes sounding pompous, but, uh, you know, art and, uh, you know, um, and it's really helped in terms of going deeper into the story and the characters, mm-hmm. just to to write it as as literary rather than in a play. Mm-hmm. And then I started just writing ten minute plays just to get away from the play. Mm-hmm. What do you do with ten minute plays? You know, these little sort of. Uh, mind burps mm-hmm, plays, mm-hmm. you know what do you do with them how do you submit them mm-hmm. where do you submit them mm-hmm. that's a good question crystal knows i think she knows i think there are i, I think that's like an online question i think google would know you know i think there are a lot of 10 minute play festivals out there because what with um you know, people wanting uh, theaters wanting to be as inclusive, very, very inclusive in communities and people having short attention spans. They want to include lots of different kinds of people, lots of different writers. I feel like there are a lot of 
uh, people interested in doing 10 minute plays these days. But I don't know off the top of my head. You know, I, I mean, not that they have to be seen. It's just that it was a great exercise in, in finishing. I guess mm -hmm. the word is finishing, mm -hmm. you know, the beginning, middle and end. And mm -hmm. uh, um, can you think of like, if would it be fun to have, you know, even Zoom readings of them? You know? Oh, that's fun. <laughs> no, what I mean, just like, because you, you know, folks in theater, you know, invite your friends to just have like, again, like a weekly, like, hey, let me read, or even let me read some of my plays and someone else read some of their work and like that, do a, um, a Zoom like that, or bring in some people to read your work. That would be really fun. You know, it's so funny because I've done so many Zoom readings over the last, what is, has it been two years? Yeah, yeah, yeah. God, God. And Zoom readings are so very strange because uh, uh, they're good to hear hear the the words and the and the play, but they're not a performance in the sense of uh, interacting. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it's mm -hmm. it, it loses something. I mean, it's sort of like what we all miss, which is mm -hmm. uh, communal hellos. Mm -hmm. You know. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, this is being here is kind of like getting a great big hug from you. You know what I mean? <laughs> and, uh, and we miss that, but you know, mm -hmm. it's been two years without you. hugs. I hear you. I, hear you know, you. I know, I know, but that's a good idea. I, yeah. I could do that. Yes. But really congratulations on writing those and getting to finish. Cause there's something really um, amazing and it feels so good to, to write, you know, type the end you know, um, and then go on to the next one. You know, Some really of cool. them, I actually start with the end. Oh, fantastic. You know, I, I mean, ah. yes, I know that sounds terrible, but on the 10th, no, no, no. I put the end and it makes me <laughs> somehow finish it. Right, you know, right, right, right. It, it doesn't mean I have no um, judgment of it, you know, bad, good or indifferent. It just, like you said, you know, I put a timer Mm -hmm. I have an idea. Mm -hmm. I babble, and the end—it's a wonderful Very feeling. Very good. <laughs> Very good. So. It's great to see you, Len. It's great. I'm to sorry, see you. I'm sorry about your sister. Yeah, me sorry. too. Thank you. Oh, sure. We love you. I love you too. Oops. Well, it is six o'clock. Can you believe? Yeah, yeah, another perfect day. Great seeing you all. Yeah, we'll be back. We'll be, it's going to be Valentine's Day next week. Mm. Mm. It is. Mm. Okay, we'll be here. We'll be here. Maybe we'll be okay. eating chocolate. Mm. Yes, let's do it. <laughs> yeah. See okay. you all next week. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye. Yeah, you.